It's hard to believe I started this channel two years ago. Like my one year channel anniversary, I am here today to fulfill a promise I made way back in my third video of the Tales of Retrospective, which was my review of the Game Boy Advance port of Tales of Fantasia, the only version of the game released in North America. Well, until Tales of Fantasia's port to the iOS, only to be removed later from the App Store. Due to the nature of the Game Boy Advance port, my original video focused on its failings in comparison to the other versions of the game. So today, I'll be reviewing the Super Famicom and PlayStation versions of Tales of Fantasia, giving the game the review that has been long overdue. With all that said, let's get started. Tales of Fantasia was originally released for the Super Famicom. This game, as many of you may know, is the first installment of the Tales series. It is actually based off the unpublished Japanese novel, Tale Fantasia, which is written by the game's programmer, Yoshiharu Gotanda. The story was adopted into the game we now know as Tales of Fantasia, with various changes made to the game's story, such as altering or removing certain scenarios, as well as changing the roles and names of characters. The game was produced by Namco and developed by Wolf Team. Many of the initial members of Wolf Team left Namco due to some disagreements with all the changes made to the original Tale of Fantasia. They later went on to create the new studio, Triace, best known for the Star Ocean games, which I uh, covered already. Anyway, this internal dispute resulted in the game being delayed from its targeted 1994 release date. Namco quickly hired on new members to fill the missing ranks of Wolf Team and released Tales of Fantasia on December 15th, 1995 in Japan. The PlayStation port was released in 1998 using an enhanced version of the Tales of Destiny engine. Now, with that brief history lesson out of the way, let's move on to the actual review. The game begins with an epic battle between four unnamed heroes and a villain named Dios, whom they trap as he attempts to flee through time and space. After the brief intro credits scene, the game truly begins with our hero Kles, or Cress, depending on the version or translation you're playing, going on a hunt with his childhood friend Chester. The pair return from their hunt only to find their village completely destroyed and everyone they know dead. This prompts the pair to flee the remnants of their home and to punish the ones responsible. From here, many events transpire that result in our heroes entering a much grander adventure than they could have ever imagined, like fighting in great wars, solving supernatural mysteries, and traveling through time. As usual, to avoid spoilers, I'll stop summarizing the plot, but I feel that Tales of Fantasia's narrative holds up surprisingly well and offers many dark turns and twists. It may now feature many cliches, but at the time, they weren't, and despite this, I still believe that Tales of Fantasia holds one of the most memorable and well-told stories presented in the entire Tales series. A big reason for this is the game's cast of characters. Although Tales of Fantasia does feature one of the smaller casts in the series with six playable party members, seven in the PlayStation version, all of the characters are fairly well developed and feature many distinct personalities, which may come off as cliche, but their interactions and character development are interesting enough to hold their own throughout the game. While they may not be as dynamic as other casts in future games of the series, each of these characters define various archetypes that the series still uses to this day. Now, the gameplay across the Super Famicom and PlayStation versions are for the most part similar. The PlayStation version of Tales of Fantasia implements a revamped version of the Tales of Destiny engine, resulting in an improved combat system, but both versions are perfectly playable and fun. The linear motion battle system debuted here, and for the most part, it holds up fairly well. With that said, there are some annoyances that are rather apparent, especially if you played any of the more recent Tales games prior to playing Fantasia. My primary annoyance with the battle system is that your controlled characters can only be set to semi-automatic control for the first 8 or so hours of the game, meaning that you do not have full control of your characters. Because of this, you'll have characters running back and forth between attacks, resulting in oddly paced battles. Manual mode only unlocked by equipping the technical ring, which cannot be acquired until later in the game. Manual mode does solve this issue, but the technical ring can be missed and isn't unlocked until after 10 or so hours into the game. Some other issues like the party member AI are also problematic during battle. Your party members will constantly just stand around not engaging enemies or casting spells, so you'll have to issue direct commands to your party in order for them to contribute at all in any given battle. I found that the AI in the PlayStation version was slightly better at casting spells and staying active during battles. Speaking of spells, every time an attack spell or summon is used, the game pauses and you are forced to watch the animation each time one of these types of spells are cast. Another annoyance is the frequency of random battles, particularly in the Super Nintendo version. While at the time, random encounters were the standard, but the constant repetition of battles makes my previous complaints all the more apparent, especially in the later game when you have access to some of the better spells and you might want to be using them quite a bit. Nitpicks and complaints aside, Tales of Fantasia can still be fun to play, but it does uh, have some issues that may hamper your enjoyment of the game. Regardless of the battle system, Tales of Fantasia features one of the best overworlds in any Tales game. It offers many optional areas and dungeons, and the game on a whole contains many side quests, with some that span multiple hours. 
All of the interesting people to me and side activities that you can participate in kept me constantly searching every nook and cranny as well as talking to every NPC in every town in order to discover all of the game's secrets. For those of you that love the freedom of older RPGs and enjoy engaging in side quests will most likely love Tales of Fantasia. Graphically, Tales of Fantasia is one of the best looking 16-bit games ever made, as it did come out near the end of the Super Famicom's life. From character sprites to the design of various towns and dungeons, Tales of Fantasia is pure eye candy for any lover of 16-bit sprites or graphics. I would even go as far to argue that Tales of Fantasia looks just as good, if not better, than the likes of Final Fantasy III or Secret of Mana, or at least on par with some of the best looking games on the system. The PlayStation version does sport improved graphics, the primary difference being that the overworld is completely rendered in 3D, which admittedly has aged worse than the Super Famicom counterpart. While the PlayStation version does not look dramatically better, it is the prettier between the two versions. Other than its impressive world and gameplay systems that have aged fairly well, Tales of Fantasia also sports an impressive soundtrack by series composer Motoi Sakuraba and Shinji Tamura. The game's sound design is incredibly impressive for the Super Famicom and features various voice clips and even has a full intro song, which is only possible through the use of a 48 megabyte cartridge. Tales of Fantasia is one of the only Super Famicom games to use this type of cartridge. The PlayStation port sounds fairly identical with some slight remixes of songs and only features a handful of new ones, but it does feature better quality voice samples and some voiceover during key cutscenes. Overall, the sound design in both versions are impeccable for the time, so you can't really go wrong with either version here, although the PlayStation version has more to offer in this regard. Okay, now that I've discussed what made Tales of Fantasia so special, it's time that I talk about the specific differences between the various versions and ultimately which one of the game you should play. The PlayStation port of Fantasia offers everything you'd expect from an enhanced port. Better graphics, sound, smoother gameplay, as well as more content such as a new playable party member, more arts, items, side quests, and a couple neat bonuses. So on a whole, I should recommend that most should play the PlayStation version, but I do feel there is some sort of magic when playing the original Super Famicom version. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I feel there's something lost when playing on other versions. I think that comes down to the fact how innovative Tales of Fantasia was for its time, and how the game was doing things never seen, like the intro song. But at the end of the day, both are perfectly playable, with the PlayStation port being what most will likely prefer. As of this recording, both versions have received full fan translations, but the PlayStation port of Tales of Fantasia has too. The original is done by Absolute Zero Translations and features a translation similar to the Game Boy Advance port. The other translation is done by Fantasia Productions and is done in a style similar to New Tales games. While I don't necessarily think that one translation is inherently better than the other, the Fantasia Productions translation modifies the original code so that players can start the game with the technical ring, which resolves most of my gameplay complaints. As such, I would recommend the Fantasia Productions translation simply due to the inclusion of having the technical ring from the get-go. There is also the PSP version to consider, Tales of Fantasia X, which features full voiceover, an enhanced battle system, and improved character sprites. The PSP version is the definitive version of the game, but sadly, it is the only version to not have a fan translation. However, Absolute Zero Translations is currently working on their own for this game. But there is still another version to discuss, the iOS exclusive version of Tales of Fantasia. This version was free on the App Store, and as many of you already know, was eventually removed. Oddly enough, Fantasia iOS released in English and features a brand new translation, which begs the question whether or not the PS1 or PSP versions could ever see a Western release. But I digress, I have previously done a hastily put together preview video of this version, so I won't go into too much depth here, but I will say that it is far from a perfect port. It's very similar to the PSP version and contains all of the same content except for that version's improved battle system. Instead, we had touch controls and overall much less control of what's going on. As well, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but it felt like the game was made artificially difficult, as my attacks felt ineffective against bosses and tough enemies in this version. Even after level grinding and acquiring better gear, these fights always felt more difficult than they were in other versions. Perhaps this is simply due to the touch controls or my own incompetence, but I feel that's worth mentioning. Regardless, this version is long gone and is up there at the GBA port as one of the worst versions of the game. So, in conclusion, I believe that Tales of Fantasia is still worth revisiting today. It does show its age here and there, but as a whole, the game remains perfectly playable and is worth experiencing for all the side quests and emphasis on exploration. You absolutely can't go wrong with the PlayStation version, and there are also the other four versions if that does not suit your fancy. Well, that's all I have to say about Tales of Fantasia. I hope you all enjoyed my thoughts on it, and I thank you once again for another amazing year here on YouTube. I hope you all look forward to the coming videos this summer and the foreseeable future. As always, been Darren of the Gaming Pilgrimage. Till next time.
I know I've said this many times already throughout the video, but thanks again guys for all the support over these past two years. It's been incredible. I love making videos here on YouTube and I don't plan stopping. In fact, now that summer and school's finally done for at least a few months or so, I can finally get back to a somewhat regular schedule and post videos in a weekly manner or something of the like. I gotta finish this week code in retrospective. In fact, it's barely begun and I'm falling behind schedule, so I really want to get that out of the way, so look forward to seeing Sweet Code and Retrospective over the summer, and as well other videos that I'll be doing for RPG site. So with all that said, thanks as always, and see you next time.